this video we'll be discussing the final set of rules of replacement from 7.4. Transposition, material implication, material equivalence, exportation, tautology. Let's take a look at a few examples. This first one presents an interesting challenge in as much as there's only one premise with the letter T and we have to derive the conclusion S implies T. So we know we're going to have to add something. Again, like a previous example though, we better be careful and think about what we're going to have to add. We don't want to add the S because then there will be no way to get the conditional S implies T. To see how this works, let's add the negation of S. Once we add the negation of S, we can do commutativity to get the letters in the right order. Now, of course, we still have the problem of how to get rid of the negation and how to change the disjunction sign to a conditional. Fortunately, we have the rule of implication which allows us to do both of these. And so we can derive the conclusion, thus proving the argument valid. Our next example presents some interesting difficulties. One of the problems we now have, since we have so many rules of inference, is there are so many things that are possible to do now. So we have to become a little bit adept at figuring out which things we don't want to do and focus on the things that we do want to do. One way to do this is by process of elimination. For example, in this proof, it would be possible to get the negation of T out of line 1. If we had the negation of R, we could do a modus tollens. We have no negation of R, so that possibility seems off limits. And with line 2, it's also possible to get the negation of T by modus tollens if we have R which we also don't have. So clearly we're not going to be able to do either one of those. Another problem is there's quite a few rules of replacement that are now possible to do, some of which would be helpful, some of which wouldn't. We could turn line 1 into a disjunction by the rule of implication. We could turn line 2 into a disjunction. We could switch both of them around by the rule of transposition. We could put them together by the rule of conjunction. The question is, would any of this be helpful? In cases like this, where you have a single letter as the conclusion, Given that we now have the rule of tautology, it's important to remember that this is a possibility as well for deriving an individual letter. Sometimes what you might have to do is just experiment with a few steps and see if they generate any ideas. Trying transposition on line 2 might yield something. What we get is the line R implies the negation of T. And now look what we have on lines 1 and 3. We can use the rule of hypothetical syllogism to put these two together since they now have a common term, the letter R. So now we get the very strange line, T implies the negation of T. Keep in mind that we now have the ability to turn any conditional statement into a disjunction. And look at what happens if we turn the conditional statement in line 4 into the disjunction. Using the rule of implication, we get not T or not T. And of course, by tautology, this is simply equivalent to not T, thus proving the argument valid. There's only one rule in 7.4 that deals with equivalent statements, the rule of material equivalence. And so anytime you see a biconditional statement in a proof, you know you're going to have to use that rule. So this example, we know we're going to have to turn line 1 into something by the rule of material equivalence. Since there are two options, though, the question is, which one do we use? Sometimes this is not immediately obvious. One clue, however, does exist in line 3 the expression G implies M only if T, remember, can be turned into something by exportation. As we'll see in a moment, it can be turned into the expression G and M implies T. And that gives us a clue as to which one of the two propositions we want to turn line 1 into. So by the rule of equivalence, we'll turn line 1 into either G and M or not G and not M. And notice the second half of this can be changed by De Morgan's rule. Remember, rules of replacement can be used on part of a line as well as the entire line. Having done this, now we can see what line 2 is for. We can use 2 and 5 to form a disjunctive syllogism to get the G and M by itself. At this point, we can turn line 3 into G and M implies T using the rule of exportation. We could have performed this rule earlier, doesn't really matter, but now that we have line 7, we can do a simple modus ponens to get the conclusion, which is T thus proving the argument valid.